We're now close to the conclusion of the International Space Station's Expedition 43, which has been a very busy time for science for the six station crew members. That leads directly into Expedition 44, which will conclude or continue the one-year mission and a lot of other research. Recently, my colleague Pat Ryan had spoke with uh, Jorge Sotomayor, the lead increment scientist for both expeditions 43 and 44, to get an update, starting with the crew's work on a flame experiment known as FLEX-2. Basically, FLEX-2 studies the combustion of tiny little droplets of fuel uh, in microgravity uh, and study the generation of uh, soot uh, during those tests. And um, FLEX-2 uh, studied different mixes of fuel and, uh, and also studied, uh, in addition to just one droplet of fuel, it also studied multiple fuel droplets, uh, two specifically. So uh, it wanted to study the interaction of the flame uh, with between the two droplets as they uh, ignite. And, uh, and actually, we have a new experiment coming up, uh, FLEX-2J, uh, in collaboration with Japan. And in that experiment, we're actually going to test uh, multiple droplets of fuel igniting at the same time and study the interaction of the flame uh, as it occurs. And it's important to know how flames burn in space because it's different than it is on Earth, right? Uh, it is, yes. Yeah, we have a, 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 a spherical uh, droplet of fuel, so the properties, combustion properties, and the fluid dynamics are different than what ha occurs in microgravity, than what occurs uh, here on Earth. So with this information, we can uh, design uh, advanced uh, systems for uh, combustion systems uh, for spacecraft, as well as study uh, uh, and design cleaner uh, burning uh, techniques uh, for the ground. Interesting. Mm -hmm. now, there's also science on board the station that happens outside the pressurized mm -hmm. modules. Uh, in fact, the, the robotic refueling mission had mm -hmm. operations recently. Tell mm -hmm. us about what that is. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, the uh, robotic refueling mission uh, phase two, or RRM, as we call it. Um, that mission studies uh, how to uh, repair satellites currently on orbit, uh, um, but that were not designed to be repaired wow. um, so or refueled. So what RRM uh, Phase 2 consisted of was um, the crew set up uh, task boards and tools uh, in, the, in the gem airlock. Then the SSRMS, the robotic arm, came over and picked those tools up and installed them in the R on the RM facility. Uh, external to the station right and uh, the next phase is for the robotic arm to test those tools um, simulating uh, that it's doing a repair on a failed uh, satellite so the advantage of this is that we can extend the lives of the satellites on orbit that were not initially planned uh, for replacement for uh, long duration and that will save cost to the uh, companies on the ground as they don't have to relaunch the satellites. Yeah, clearly have, have some, some value. Uh, another thing that got a lot of attention during Expedition 43 was the first espresso machine oh, yeah. uh, on board the station. Yes. But that's not just for fun, right? Mm -hmm. that, tell me about that demonstration. Yes, yeah, yeah that was a, a very interesting uh, demonstration. It's a, a, an investigation from the Italian Space Agency, and uh, basically it wanted to bring to the station the comforts of home from the ground. And, um, and actually, coincidentally, an Italian uh, astronaut, right. Samantha Cristoforetti, installed uh, the ISS espresso, uh, espresso machine and tested it. Uh, it was all very successful. And so now what the intent is to, it, it not only helps in terms of uh, bringing other options for food uh, consumption mm -hmm. to the astronauts, but also uh, the psychological effect of bring it closer to home. Yeah. In, uh, I think this other thing was sort of a psych psychological thing too. They were using cups that allowed them to actually drink more like they would on Earth, as opposed to a straw in a bag. Mm -hmm. Yes, capillary beverage. Yeah, that's, uh, that investigation studies how to uh, use fluid dynamics on the design of a cup so that the liquid doesn't spill 
uh, it's still an open cup, but the liquid doesn't spill. Again, using all the physics and uh, uh, fluid dynamics uh, that go with it. Now, interestingly enough, this technology from uh, capillary beverage is not only being used to design these cups, but also uh, it will be used to design uh, advanced fluid systems uh, for spacecraft. So it's all, it seems very simple, but the physics involved are very complex and have a multiple uh, application. And a, a way to control the movement of liquids where there's no gravity, mm -hmm. like yes. pulling fluids to the bottom of a fuel tank, for right. example. Right, right. Yes, that, that's, a, that's a problem that, the, that we're working on. Mm -hmm. uh, the Expedition 43 crews uh, working on a couple of big experiments in the one-year mission uh, coming up. Uh, tell me about this, this fluid shifts experiment and what Scott Kelly is going to be doing inside a, a Russian uh, piece of hardware. Mm, yes, yeah, that's a very interesting experiment. And fluid shifts, uh, basically uh, what the scientists want to study is the effect of long-term uh, uh, exposure to microgravity. and because the fluids shift from the lower part of the body to the upper part of the body. And that creates increased uh, pressure in the brain, which at the same time then uh, it increases the pressure on the eye, on the back of the eye, and that changes the vision of the astronauts. So the objective is to study how that happens and uh, possibly identify uh, countermeasures for that, uh, with that situation by testing uh, the ocular structure and measuring the ocular structure and intracranial pressure, both uh, outside of the chibis uh, suit as well as inside the chibis suit. What the chibis uh, suit does, it's a, a lower body negative pressure, so it will simulate or avoid having those fluids shifting from the lower body to the upper portion of the body. It, it kind of draws fluids back down mm -hmm. into the legs, right? Correct, correct. So we want to take the measurements with and without the chibi suit and see if, if, if it makes a difference. Is there a thought that that might be a, a, a way to fight the fluid shift? Mm -hmm. that, that we can, can do it with crew members throughout the mission, perhaps? Correct, correct. And potentially avoid uh, temporary or permanent uh, changes to the eye structure. Uh, Scott Kelly and Mikhail Kornienko have also been working on a thing called fine motor skills. That's part of their, mm -hmm. their one-year plan, too. What's, what, yes. what do they do for that? Mm. Yeah, that one, actually, uh, as you know, nowadays uh, we rely on technology, uh, and, and not only technology, but uh, iPads and tablets and touchscreen activities. Right. So in this particular investigation, the crew members will do several tests uh, throughout their mission uh, to identify, and all of the tests are going to be done on a touchscreen uh, tablet, to identify how their reaction and the fine motor skills evolved as they uh, stay on orbit, and particularly during a one-year mission. So they were tested before flight, then during flight to measure and identify the adaptation process, and then after they come back to the ground to identify how they uh, readapt to the Earth's gravity. And that's important to f because crew members need to still have those fine motor skills to do their jobs. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, especially uh, on orbit, uh, as well on the ground, but on orbit, they have to work with very sensitive uh, hardware, do repairs on very sensitive hardware, so it is very important that they maintain the fine motor skills uh, throughout their mission. Be interesting to watch that in, into Expedition 44 and beyond. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, we'll have an opportunity to, to check in with you again then, find out mm -hmm. how it's going. Sounds good. Expedition mm -hmm. 43 and 44 lead increment scientist, Jorge Sotomayor.